Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Kushbu and in this video we are going to see the other approach for solving the question maximum value at a given index in a bounded array. In the previous video we have already seen how we can go from brute force to a little optimized approach in order to solve this question. But we also discussed that is there another way, another better way to solve this question or not. And yes, there is another way which was binary search. So let's go and see the binary search approach to solve this problem. We have discussed the basics of this problem in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you to go and watch that video. The link to it is somewhere in the top. So go ahead, check it out and so that you understand what the sum is, how the array looks like and what are we going to do with the question. One thing that we know is that we are going to search for the answer in a linear space of number which is from 1 to the max sum that is given to us. Why till the max sum? Because the entire sum of the array must not exceed max sum. So if there is only one element in that array, the answer will be max sum itself. So our answer will go from 1 to max sum. Also, we cannot have 0 in the array as well. So, now that we know that we want to retrieve the answer or we are going to see whether our answer is a correct fit or not, we are trying to search for that in a sorted space of numbers which is from 1 to maximum. And that's the reason why we can apply binary search to it. For applying binary search, we need to keep two things into mind which is search space and the second one is the condition in which we either discard or keep a particular left and right half of our answer so that we are reducing the search space by half in each iteration. So what is the answer to the first one? Our search space lies from 1 to maximum and what are the conditions to discard the half of the array or the half of the numbers is lying with the relation of my sum of the current array taking into account that I am choosing a particular number with my max sum. Because if the sum of my array with the particular number is exceeding the max sum, which means that I am in the wrong half, I need to go to the lower end and vice versa. Now that we know these two answers, we only need to find a way to find out this particular sum of array. So for that, Let's see an example. Suppose we are taking this example. Over here, we have this index that we are trying to maximize and I have plotted a graph of it. So you see that this is the peak element and this is going down, this is going down and once it has reached 1, it is same plateau of 1. So let's divide it into two parts. One is the left part and other is the right part. Now. The sum of the entire array would be the sum of left, sum of right and the element itself. Now what is the sum in the left? Sum in the left is this. And what is the sum in right? Sum in right is this. Over here I have divided into two parts. We will see why I have done that. Now let's take a look what this depicts. Left is the sum of 3 to 5. Right is sum of this 5 to 1 or we can say 1 to 5 plus these two elements which are forming a plateau. So this can also be given as sum of x to n and sum of 1 to n where n is the value we are taking minus 1. Also we are going to add this plateau part which is a or in this case we can also have the same thing in left as well and that can be b. So let's first take this example and we'll formulate same formulas for left and right both. We know that sum of 1 to n is given by n into n plus 1 by 2. This is a basic mathematical formula. So now if we want to find out the sum of x to n which is this 3 to 5, we can say that that is equivalent to sum of 1 to n which will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 minus the sum of the elements that we do not want. So minus 1 to x minus 1 because we are taking it from x. So sum of all the elements till x minus 1 needs to be subtracted from that. Basic mathematics, no rocket science. 
So now let's go ahead and see what are the variables that we are going to use for this question and what are the values that will get filled in those variables while we are coding it. So here are the variables. One is n which is nothing but this n or this part. Second is the x that we saw when we have a sum that is required from a number which is not 1 but some middle number. Similar thing can happen on the other side as well. Then we have this a which we depicted here as the plateau on right and the same thing can happen with the other side as well. So now let's go ahead and see what are these variables going to depict. n is nothing but v minus 1 which is this part. The numbers till which we are going to find the sum. Second is the value of x. Now how do we calculate x? x is going to be v minus index. 6 minus the index at which it lies because there are these many more values that are filled and this is the starting point. So if you see over here 6 minus 3 which is 3. The third value is y. Now y is going to be the same case but in the right side. So let's take this array and now this will be value minus over here we had index. The right index can be found out by n minus i minus 1. So this is value minus n minus i minus 1 which is going to be 4. Here is the basic calculation for that. So value is 6 and this is 6 minus the index 3 minus 1 which is 6 minus 2 which is 4. Now what is a? a is going to be n minus i minus v. Now I have used these brackets in order for you to be clear with this. What is n minus i? n minus i is the number of elements that are present starting from this index at which we are and value of this is the number of elements that are being filled by the sum 1 to n. So if we separate this out we will get the remaining elements which is two elements that is nothing but this plateau and here is the calculation for this. So the size of this is nothing but n which is 11 i is the index which is 3 and 6 is the value of this element. So 8 elements are there if we see from here and from that 6 elements are going to be occupied by the sum 1 to n. So these 2 elements are remaining which are going to be occupied with 1s. That's about a. Same thing will happen with b as well. So for b let's take another example. For b, the formula is going to be i plus 1 minus v. How this formula came? Let's see. These are the two elements which are filled with plateau. So for that, this i plus 1. i plus 1 is nothing but the number of elements that are there because this is a zero indexed array. So these are the elements till which I am calculating and the sum is nothing but v. This is 3 to 1. This is three number of elements or three elements are occupying this sum 1 to n. So if I do i plus 1 minus v, I'll get the remaining elements which are filled with 1s. So this is the substitution for that and here is the basic calculation for this particular equation that we formed. So i plus 1 is 5 and 3 is the value. So 5 minus 3, 2, 2 elements are filled with 1s. So that's about how we are finding out the values for substitution and formula. Now we need to formalize our formula and when which formula is going to be used. So for that, we are going to have two formulas for left, two formulas for right with some condition. So in a condition wherein we have a plateau as well, we are going to simply have summation of 1 to n plus some variable a or b. And when that is not the case, we are going to have this formula, which is summation of x to n. That is nothing but summation of 1 to n minus 1 to x minus 1. Same with the other side and we will take x. Since we have taken x in left, we will take y in right. Now we have these formulas with us. 
let's just switch this a and b so that we have x and a in the left and y and b in the right and similarly we switch this formulas here as well now what are the conditions in which we are going to use one of these formulas so those are these conditions for left we see that if value is less than or equal to i plus 1 I'll have a clear summation of 1 to n plus some plateau, which can be either 0 or greater than 0. i plus 1 is nothing but 4. If I go from 4, writing down 4, 3, 2 and 1. In the boundary condition, I'll have a plateau of 0. Similarly, in my right, when my value is less than or equal to n minus i, which means 11 minus 3, which is 8. I'll have the elements to be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1 with a plateau of 0. In all the other cases, I'll have some which is going to be from some x value to n value in both the cases. So that's the condition. So this is the slide that you need to keep in mind, which is the final slide, wherein we have all the formulas with us and all the conditions with us and all the substitution values with us. Now that I have all this, I just need to apply a binary search from 1 to maxim and see the value which is going to be maximum while keeping the sum of this array within the bounds of my max sum. So this is the intuition behind the logic that we are now going to code. So let's go ahead and code it out. So there are a few things that we are going to do with this now which is write the binary search code over here and we will have a few methods. One is to calculate the sum of array and one we can take a utility method to apply summation formula. So let's start with this. So this is going to take n and it will return the sum from 1 to n which is simply n into n plus 1 by 2. Second thing is finding the sum of the array. In here, what we need is the value, the index and the length of array and we will try to find the sum. So for that, let's take a sum variable. In this, we will add the left sum, the right sum and the value. So now we are going to add the left sum into it. So we are going to have the conditions and these conditions are also going to be there for my right sum as well. Now what the condition states is whether I am having a plateau or not. So in the left we are going to have a plateau if my v is less than or equal to i. And in the right, we are going to have a plateau if my v is less than or equal to n minus i. Now, let's try and fill in the condition for left. Left, we have variables x and a. a is for the plateau. So, int a is i plus 1 minus v. And my sum will be this. Otherwise, I need to find out the x which is the starting point of my range and that is nothing but v minus i. So my sum now becomes summation till v minus 1 minus summation till x minus 1. Similarly, we are going to do it for right as well. Over here, my plateau is n minus i minus v and my sum therefore becomes v minus 1 plus b and my y is v minus n minus i minus 1 and my sum now becomes v minus 1 minus summation of y minus 1. Once we have this we are going to return sum plus v because we need to add the middle element as well. Now that this is done, we are going to write the code for binary search. So let's first take the base case. If my array is of length 1, I can simply return my max sum. Apart from this, I need a left which is 1, right which is max sum 
and I'll run a while loop and in this while loop I'll derive my mid and then I'll be calculating sum. For this I'll pass the values for which v is nothing but mid, i is the index and n is also given to us. If my sum is now less than or equal to max sum, I am going to move my left. Otherwise, I'll move my right. Finally, I am going to return left minus 1. Why? Because over here, my left is going to cross the answer by 1. That's it. Let's run this. And it's giving a perfect result. Let's submit this. And this got submitted. The time complexity over here is O of log of maxim because we are reducing the maxim by half every time in our iteration. And the space complexity is O of 1. So that's it for this question guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel to receive the notifications of the new videos that we post. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, keep learning, keep coding.